Today, I wanted to make a video talking through how you should consider making a job change in tech sales and if you should even consider making a change in the first place. Job hopping is much more common, especially in the startup world, even when compared to five to 10 years ago. It's not very uncommon to see someone who's worked somewhere for maybe a year or two and make a job change. And while there are some very valid reasons, both personally and professionally, that it may make sense to make a move, I will say the flip side and something that comes up more and more often is if you're changing jobs regularly, even every year or two, there's real pause for concern as a potential employer that I really need to consider if I want to hire you and if it's worth investing time if you're just going to leave after 12 months. So that being said, both from my own experience and also helping others make the change in their career, I wanted to make a quick video detailing how you should think through the process and if you should make a change, not only just more broadly in tech sales, but if you're an SDR, if you're an account executive, I do think the way that you should evaluate making a change does change a little bit on a few different factors. So like as an example, if you're an SDR, I've helped a lot of people break into tech sales into their first SDR role, but I do see a pattern, whether it's with folks that I've worked with or people in my network as SDRs, that maybe they'll be at a company for six to 12 months and make a change to another company where they're drastically getting an increase in salary. Maybe they're going from 75,000 to say 100 or 110,000 total compensation, but they're still in an SDR position. That being said, I don't think that making that move is necessarily a bad thing, especially if you're getting an increase in comp, you know, 20, 30, even 40%. But that being said, when you weigh it out long term, again, no right or wrong answer, but I think especially as an SDR, one thing you've got to be very careful of is if you get to a job and you haven't made it at least 12 months as an SDR and you make a change for higher comp, that's great. But if you make another job change to another company as an SDR, let's say you make that move to the new company, the second company, and it doesn't work out. And so you start looking for yet again, a third SDR job. Now down the line as a manager, I'm concerned if you've had two to three different SDR jobs and you were never able to get promoted to an account executive role. Again, it's not to say that it's gonna completely eliminate you from consideration, but it's certainly a red flag if I see that you worked as an SDR for six months at one company, for nine to 12 months at another company, and then have a third SDR job or are even applying as an SDR to my company. Why are you looking now for a third SDR job and why haven't you been able to get promoted to an account executive role? Again, that's more the negative and worst case scenario. I do think there is value in potentially changing jobs. Let's say you've made it 12 months and you see no clear path to an account executive role for say another 12 months. At that point, maybe test the waters, see if you can't at a minimum get a 20 to 30% increase in salary as an SDR, or even see if there's companies that would be willing to take a chance and hire you directly as an account executive. There's no right or wrong answer here. And I think, again, it's not to say that you shouldn't make the move, but I will say as an SDR, especially if you're in your first SDR job. I mean, there's always exceptions and there's always cases where maybe you're in a horrible work environment, but I would really plan on your first SDR job committing to at least being there for 12 months. See what happens. If you don't see a path to account executive over maybe a 12 to 24 month period, yeah, maybe it's definitely worth considering a change. But the flip side is if you keep jumping and you don't get promoted again and again, and maybe you've had three SDR jobs with three different companies, it's gonna be really hard to make a compelling argument to a manager. And at a minimum, if I'm interviewing you for an account executive position for another SDR position, I'm gonna come into that interview with a lot of skepticism and really press you on why you've had three different SDR jobs. When you get to the account executive level, I do think that the stakes kind of change and the way that you evaluate making a change is a little bit different. There's a great video I'll put in the description from Gary Tan, who talks about how if you're not learning and earning, it's definitely time to consider a change. If you're doing one or the other, where maybe you're still learning a lot or you're earning a lot, then it may also be worth considering staying. And certainly if you're learning and you're earning what you feel like you're worth, then at that point, you're in a great situation. It really doesn't make sense to make a change at that point. Obviously, that's a simple level of evaluation, but I think it's a good gauge, like in my own case, I was promoted uh, three different times at my first sales job. I was President's Club two years in a row. I was global number one selling one of our key and strategic product lines. And that being said, when I continued having a lot of success, I really pressed to try and get to the highest level of sales or the enterprise sales level. And I had seen a lot of different reps within the company that had been there for maybe four to five years and never even got that chance to become an enterprise account executive. And I had already had a stronger track record than them to the point where I was leading global company calls and teaching other folks on the team how to sell our new product line that was the key and future of the company. That being said, I still learned a lot from being able to teach sales processes, but I really reached a point where Yes, I was earning a decent amount. I was performing very well, but I knew there was upside in other opportunities. And also on the flip side, from a learning perspective, while it was fun and I was learning a lot teaching others of the success that I'd had and how I'd sold the product, there was one key point in my mind where I was on a call with 60 other people from the company that I was at. 
teaching them how to sell this product. And some of the folks that had been there for five to 10 years were telling me my approach was wrong. And again, there were 60 people on this call. All 60 of those people combined had sold less than I had sold as an individual myself. And so at that point, I realized that I was probably in the wrong place. I really didn't have a ceiling to continue to learn because again, I had asked management directly if I could get promoted to an enterprise account executive role. And they told me that I needed more experience. They really gave me wishy-washy answers, didn't give me any way to really prove that I was ready, though they were telling me I needed more experience. There weren't any key criteria. There weren't any objectives they put in place to say, if you can accomplish this, you will move to this role. And so at that point, I realized I was really kind of capped out both on the learning and earning front. And I tested the waters, began interviewing at different companies to see if I could make that move to enterprise account executive. Sure enough, because of the success that I'd had, because of the work that I'd put in, I got a couple different opportunities in the enterprise space. And it ultimately, both from a compensation and a learning standpoint, made sense to make that change. And again, while I had two years of tenure, a lot of folks asked me as an example because I was a President's Club award winner two years in a row. A lot of interviewers were asking me why I'd even consider making the change. But because I had a very compelling story, because of what I mentioned to you earlier in this video, it really was a matter of both increasing my earning potential and learning potential. I had proven that I could bring a new product to market. I had proven that I could be not only a top performer at one point in my career, but multiple years in a row. And the fact that I wasn't being rewarded for that at my current company was justification to make the move. And that's something that a lot of people can buy into. Now, that being said, that story is a lot different than if you went to a company, had a little bit of success, all your peers were having more success than you, and you kind of failed and just kind of petered around and you're like, yeah, I'm not happy. You can't really communicate concisely why you wanna make that change. And lastly, I'd say I've seen a lot of different content from different sales creators on different platforms like YouTube, TikTok, et cetera, and there's differing opinions. And I agree, if you're in a great situation where you're learning a lot, you're earning, either as much or very close to your potential for your position, the tenure that you have in sales, et cetera, then I don't think it's worth moving just to go to a shiny company or just get maybe a 20% increase in salary. That being said, if you are getting offers in the 50 to 100% increase and it's a valuable company, you're doing your research, maybe it's worth entertaining. But I think if you're very happy, again, if you're learning and you're earning, I would really put it on a company that wants to recruit you and poach you away. And the flip side too, if you do make a change, you end up in a company that's either a horribly toxic environment. Maybe the company is not as strong as they had sold to you. You find some things that were just clearly not what was promoted to you in the interview, etc. At that point, again, varying views here, and I wouldn't repeatedly do this or just jump to new companies and expect that you can do this all the time. But I will say I've seen a, a few influencers say that if you do end up in that kind of situation where it's really toxic, it's not what you expected at all, etc., then I do think it's worth just ripping the cord and getting out of there sooner rather than later. I do think in general, you should almost always try to be at a job for at least a year. But if you get to a situation that's absolutely horrible and you wanna make a change within three to four months, I think given how managers perceive that, again, if you're telling that story correctly, being respectful of both parties or all parties involved in that process, then I don't think there's anything wrong with ripping the cord and making a move, but you should definitely do your research and whatever company you're going to beyond that should commit to a year for better or worse. So again, like anything, whether it's sales process or even this video, there's no right or wrong answer, but I hope that thought process gives you a good way to evaluate if it is worth making a move. I don't think it's a horrible thing to make a job change every year, certainly every two years and beyond. But that being said, there's trade-offs both ways. If you're job hopping all the time, I, as a manager, am gonna be a little more skeptical of hiring you, and I'm really gonna to wanna to see if you're in it for the long haul. The flip side is, if you do stay at a company too long, you really may max out, limit your earning and learning potential long-term. And if you're there, while it can be comfortable, and maybe that's the lifestyle you want, for me at least, especially still pretty early in my career, I wanna be in a situation where I'm maximizing as and trying to earn as much as I possibly can, while also being at a great company, learning from not only very talented peers around me, but from the industry that I'm selling in, always trying to be on the front edge and sell very cool tools. So anyway, my two cents. I hope you got a lot out of it and we'll see you next week.